This video will explore how you can use these super cute half width one rack unit displays from Densitron as a touchscreen application with raw panel and reactor inside of the blue pill world of Skahoy. Blue pill is a platform that um, is represented by actually this blue pill server device but we also have a lot of panels that has the same power built inside. So here is one of my go-to devices for development. It has joystick, it has rotary encoders, it has a fader, it has a lot of buttons, four-way buttons, so it detects edge presses and displays all across the board. Most videos you find from Skahoy will focus on our panels. This is how we make a living. We are selling these. The power of blue pill and reactors inside of this one, and it's the same that you get in this little package. So for various reasons, depending on your setup, you might want to have just a blue pill server. And today that is all we need, because that one will host the application that will make this into a touchscreen. So essentially, this is a screen. It doesn't have HDMI on the backside, it has USB. But you can hook this up to a, a computer of any type, including a Raspberry Pi. So in this little setup, I have made a um, setup with this screen here. It has two USB cables coming into it. And these USB cables will now be connected to a Raspberry Pi. All right, so we'll just plug them in here. The one of the cables is actually just for power. The other one is to make it a screen. On side the Pi, uh, you know, on the Pi itself, there's a memory card inside and the image of that one is found on our wiki page. So on this wiki page, you can scroll down and you'll find a part of this article is about how to make this screen work, how to boot it up and put something useful onto it. So it's happening right now and it has been pre-configured to talk to my blue pill. So it, it is now booting up and it is opening a web browser, pointing it over to the IP address of my web browser. But currently, unfortunately, it says that we have no internet. It is currently set up, pointed to an IP address and port of my blue pill right here. But the port number, and I would guess that it would be, be the IP address of my blue pill and probably this, let me see, I think it was like this port I would set up and there's nothing here, okay? Because everything that we are doing were on this URL, okay. So <clears throat> so what are we looking at right here? This video is in a succession of videos about Dentitron screens as touch screens with raw panel and so on. So it comes from the previous video, but let me show you what this is. If you go to the blue pill, we are now on the web UI of this guy, then we have this X panel touch package installed. We go into this one and you can see that it is currently facilitating a touch screen on this web server port. If I change that to 52, then I think actually my web browser will be happy down here. So let's just restart that. Unfortunately, I am unsure it, if it will pick it up itself. Maybe if I press the reload, Ooh, <laughs> that was pretty cool, wasn't it? Now. So from now on, we can actually just go about our business and talk about how to have different layouts of this one. Because right now, this one is designed for a um, different canvas ratios. So when you pick your touchscreen poison, you can basically have a, an iPad. And if you use an iPad, then you are likely to choose something like three by four, I guess. Uh, if you are going with the U-Ready screens, then you will pick the U-Ready canvas ratio for your touchscreen. In this case, we have also a specific layout which is tailor made and designed for uh, one of the Densitron screens with rubber buttons on. What I would typically pick would be something else like a Quick Bar Uno for this kind of application. So let's just try that and restart and then see what happens on our panel. We uh, should experience a reload down here. So now you see we have a different UI on this one. There is um, potentially also other UIs that's better. This one, I think it works better on the iPad and you'll have to experiment a little, for, a little forth and back actually uh, on, on these ones. If I reload here, you will be, oh, I need to change the port right there. Okay, so you see that the actual form factor of the U-Ready One U panel is not ideal for this particular touch panel setup with six buttons and displays over that we have picked. So that was not the, the best option. Let's try something else, which uh, what we, we need to keep the form factor because we want to use the full screen on this one. But 
I think the one that I've been using before with some kind of success is this one. And I think in the con um, configuration file field, I can type in something like rows times column, one row times six columns. And that might actually give me exactly what I'm looking for when I see this reloaded in a second. There you go. We have now six buttons. I found this to be optimal, maybe seven. I don't know if seven is great. We can try seven. So there are ways and this would, I don't know if I have information about this already, but at least on this page about the Densitron screens, if you go over here, you have also a wiki page about how, you know, what, what you can do right now. And you have all these predefined templates in a sense and how to set it up and all this. So all this configuration stuff I'm kind of talking about now, like which layout to choose, this format you want to choose, that is all mentioned inside of this article. So please go to that article and check it out. This is also where we update with more information as we go. And actually, it did look pretty nice with seven buttons. That is the best you can get. Okay, so now we have this raw panel device. We also even have it in our web browser here because it's serving out of the same blue pill. And I have it right here as a raw panel I can connect to and I can see the topology representation of it. So if I wanted to turn on a button in red, you can uh, you can see that on the panel is now red. I can also type in some text and then we get a button with text and information and so on. So it seems like it's blanking out. I think something else is competing about um, being connected to it. And that's probably Reactor. So Reactor is the reason we are doing all these things because just having a panel that has like a, um, a TCP based um, UI and so on, that's great if you're an integrator, but if you're just you, or if you are you and you like being you and you want to control switches, cameras and so on, like uh, most of us do much of the time, then Reactor is the place to go. This is where you can configure this one just like a Stream Deck. Let's try that out, but let's just blow this project away and make a new one, which is called you Ready one u So I'll just add this real quick, save, there we go. So we are now starting a new project. In this new project, I'll add a panel. Again, you see we are running it out of the blue pill. This is where everything is happening. This little device is the server for this whole thing. In the discovery panel uh, section, we find our touch panel. I'll just select this one. And now it's popping up right here. You also see on the panel that it is now connected. I can also use this one to check the connection. Yes, it is actually working. And then I can create my custom configuration, give it a name. Test. I kind of dislike that you need to name the configurations because every time it feels like, oh, I need to think about something. I don't know what to think about it and so on. But anyway, we are here. We select the configuration down here. And from this moment on, it's just like you would set up a Stream Deck. You can make multiple pages. So for instance, I am already foreseeing that I want to control auxiliaries on an ASM switcher. So for this one, I have now made a specific page. And then I even have shifted levels. So, okay, now let's go. First of all, let's quickly go over here, add a device, because I have devices on my network and one of them would be an ATEM Constellation 2ME. So it is right there and I pick it, I select it. It's gonna be connected to in a moment. If I go over to configuration and click this button, you see that I now have actions for the ATEM Constellation 2ME. So this is really nice. I can also click and drag across which I do like because then I have like, uh, okay, I will make four buttons for selecting uh, input one, two, three, and four. I'll use program preview, which is like a combined version of a button that shows you which is on program. Uh, oh wait, just hang on for a moment here. I Let me just do this over again. Okay, program preview select. I need to set the ME row. I need to just select an input. Now, actually I have input one on all four. But if I open this one up, I can quickly change to two here. But actually, there's a super cool thing. If you press the plus one button, it's just going to auto increment. And now let's go to the touch screen and you can see that I am able to use the touch screen to actually select the different inputs for preview. We need a cut button, right? So I'll just do this real quick. Super easy to make a cut button out of this guy. And the same is true for auto. Let's just do that and select the 1ME row. So we can do cut, we can do auto transitions, which is evident if we bring up the ATEM software control, you can see we activate auto here. We have cut, 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 cut. We can select the inputs cut. So we have a little cut 
um, yeah, switch your control application now on a half rack with one unit display from Densitron. That's uh, really cool. Okay, so coming back here, I wanted to have that second page populated with something. So on this second page, you can see actually as I'm going to this page, it is transparent. So that there's nothing on it. And this is why we see the underlying actions of the background. So on this layer, still, if I drag across these six buttons and I go to auxiliary select, for instance, I would still be able to choose a channel, choose an input, use the batch editor to increment the input numbers like this. And now I have auxiliary selection. Again, this is something we can verify if we open up here, look at the first output, and then you can see that I'm actually controlling the output number one, auxiliary one on my ATEM 2ME Constellation switcher. All right, so far so good. There was this kind of thing with the shifted level, and I want to show you that because that's really nice as well. If you go to shifted, it is like what we expect in broadcast, that it's like a level which is transparent on top, but we can drag across. And then for these four inputs, for instance, we can change so that they are also selecting inputs. But in this case, instead of input one, we'll just pick five, six, seven, eight. And now on, when I'm on the shifted level, you see that we are now picking those extra inputs. Once again, let's go to the ASM software control. You can see this is how it actually is working. If we go back to the normal level here, then we are back to actually selecting input one, two, two, three, and four. All right. So all we need now is navigation, right? So on this button over here, I want to make a navigation button that will allow me to go to uh, between forth and back between the background and auxiliary layer. So because the auxiliary layer is transparent, it means that anything I put on the background is going to shine through onto the auxiliary layer. So all I need to do is to go to the background, make sure I'm there, click this button, just go to navigation, switch page. And this action is like a cyclic action. So it will switch between the available pages, which is currently those two pages. But me adding a third page would just let me cycle through those three pages. It's also possible to make an action that goes to a specific page, but then you need like more buttons you can press to have one for each page you want to go to. In this case, I want to actually change the uh, auto into a shift key. So let's, um, because I want to show you the shift as well. And um, because it's a touch screen, I think it might be best to make the shift a toggle. On a tactile controller, quite often you would have a hold down shift. So you hold it, do whatever you want to do, and then you release it again. But in this case, we'll choose a toggle. So you can see that we are currently on the background. If I press this one, we are now toggling into input two, uh, three, ah, five, six, seven, and eight. I can still do my, my cut and pressing shift again goes back to the normal state. We are now input one to five, shift, five, two, eight, and so on. I can go to my auxiliary selection, do auxiliary stuff back here, and so on. All right, guys, that was how cool and useful it is to use Blue Pill Technology Reactor to make a touch screen and ATEM switch application using Densitron's pretty neat and very, very useful screens for industrial applications.